In Stalin Starmer's party's latest proposals, they're considering taking away the free speech of MPs like Nigel Farage and Lee Anderson on TV shows on GB News in this case. Now, what is going on? Well, let's hear it from the man himself. And today, Lucy Powell, who is leader of the House, has set up a new committee, a new modernisation committee. When you hear that word, you should always have a slight shiver down the mm -hmm. spine. And she herself, unusually, is going to chair this committee. It has 14 members, nine of them are Labour. And i tell you what they're really going for. They're talking about second jobs, but in particular, what they're talking about is broadcasting. And it says the committee will consider what advantages, if any, outside paid engagements, such as media appearances, journalism and speeches furnished to the public versus potential conflicts of interest. Well, folks, I, I want to tell you this. I don't see any conflict of interest between being an MP and coming here three evenings a week for an hour. And by the way, if there are crucial votes, I just won't be here. I don't see any conflicts of interest whatsoever. In fact, I might make an argument that's slightly different, uh, that I'm here with a panel of people. Some agree with me, some disagree with me. We have open debate. I'd like to think that through programmes like this, what we actually do is take what's really happening in politics and bring it to a bigger audience. So I think it's complementary. So uh, all I can say to Lucy Powell is this really affects Lee Anderson and myself. Uh, and if you're coming after us and think you can bully us, you've picked on the wrong people. I'm not going anywhere. If you want to martyr me, please have a go. Absolutely bonkers what is going on here. This to me seems like a complete abuse of Labour power. Obviously, this has not been a policy put into place yet, but this is what they are thinking of doing. Now, a couple of things to say on this. So on the power abuse side of this, as Nigel has said, they've made this new committee and it's just full of Labour members, not representative at all. The Reform Party, yes, they've only got five MPs, but they've got a huge vote share and Labour are absolutely refusing to let them have a single space on any committee. Their voice is so important and it just shows that the people in Parliament don't really give a toss what members of the public think because if they did, they would want people on those committees that represent huge swathes of the population. So, and then I think to take one of those committees where you refuse to not only let reform have a voice on that committee, but to let any other party aside from Labour, to then use that committee to try and specifically target reform MPs to stop them from having a voice to be heard by the public, obviously having a platform on GB News amplifies their voice, means that they reach more people uh, than perhaps other MPs do. They're probably a bit jealous because they've seen how viral some of the clips of Nigel and Lee have been going online and they don't want them to have so much of a voice. And so they're trying to take that away from them. That's just yet another anti-free speech move by Labour. And the other thing to me that seems very odd about this is that this is called a modernisation committee. So they're trying to adapt the rules that Parliament has to the modern times. Well, this to me seems like it's going backwards. So if they were adapting to the modern times, they would recognise, OK, it has been the case for many years that the way MPs in their free time express their views to the public is by, for example, doing newspaper columns, writing, and that's always been allowed. But now we're in an era where video format, online streaming format, is far, far more common and more politicians and other people involved in politics, they're using this more to get their voice across as we are here at Reasoned, right? If I was getting into politics 20 years ago, I'd probably just be writing articles. I wouldn't be making videos, would I? They should be adapting to the modern times and realising, OK, this is another important way that politicians express their views to the public, communicate with their voters. We need to make sure that this is allowed because this is just as important as writing newspaper columns. But oh, no, no. They're like, oh, no, not in the modern world. We can't allow people to have a voice online and on GB News. So we better just shut them down. This to me is nasty. It is targeted and it is anti-free speech. Now, the other argument that they will make is they're cracking down on second jobs because they want to make sure that MPs spend enough time doing their jobs, spending enough time working in the constituency. 
well, if they haven't got a problem with people writing columns for newspapers, then why would they have a problem with them uh, making their voice heard in video form? And also, if the public are not assured that this person is doing their job properly and that Nigel Farage, for example, is going to Clacton often enough and attending to their needs, guess what? They can vote him out. It's a democracy. They can vote him out at the next election. So stop trying to ban it. And also, you won't have any talent in politics if you stop MPs from making any other income aside from their uh, income that they get for being an MP. There's already been a huge, huge growing gap between what people can get working in the private sector versus what they can earn in politics, which has really led to a drain of talent. And it's going to get a heck of a lot worse if you start banning second jobs. Absolutely bonkers. Now, uh, I don't know who this lovely lady is, but this is what she had to say on GB News. I think this is an absolutely bonkers proposal. Now, I completely oh, understand if an MP is spending all day, every day doing GB News shows and neglecting their job as an MP, then fine. Yeah. But he's reduced it back to three nights a week. I'm yeah. sure his team prep as much as they can for him so Correct. he can focus on his job. And they're making it out as if this is a conflict of interest mm. and that this is a bad thing for MPs to do. It's bad for politics. But I think this is a good thing for politics for MPs to be able to have a show, to be able to be more connected with the people that they represent. I mean, we've had a huge issue for many years with people feeling like they're completely disconnected from the parliamentarians that represent them, especially around Brexit, where we had three quarters of Parliament being pro-Remain and people feeling like they're pitted against them. I think this is a great way to restore trust mm. and for people to feel like they're having proper conversations with MPs because when it's just, you know, a journalist going up to an MP with a microphone and they give this sort of typical politician's answer, you don't really learn anything from it. You yeah. don't really understand their proper thinking. Well, I agree. I mean, here's the thing. Don't know who that lovely lady is, but doesn't she make some brilliant points, I have to say. Anyway, I'm Chloe Dobbs. This has been another video for Reason. Make sure you stay subscribed to our channel. And if you're not already, make sure you are subscribed and you press notification bell so you don't miss out on any hot content. I will see you guys very soon.